Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here. So I'm at the shop, as you can see. Stuff is a happening over here. Today I'm working on the um, 71 or 72, the Black Suit 10. Um, frame is back from sandblast and paint. This is uh, sandblasted and then uh, shot with uh, Pour 15, which is an excellent uh, material to cover frames with. And uh, I'm finding all kinds of stuff sketchy about this. This front reinforcement, the hot rivet had sheared off or maybe they hit something and that thing was twisted out of the way. So I put a ratchet strap on it, ratcheted it back where it's supposed to be because, I mean, it was way out of alignment. Uh, I've uh, measured the frame, which is really, actually pretty simple. A lot of these holes are references and you just measure from here to there, there, triangulate it. And it's not damaged, but uh, it definitely took a, maybe somebody hit the cross member, maybe, I don't know, the rivet broke. And then there's been all kinds of sketchy repairs on this thing. So that rivet also holds on the sway bar bracket. And what they did was just weld the spray bar, sway bar bracket there. So that's not cool. Um, uh, shock mount bolts came loose and you can't really get into them, I don't believe, when the exhaust is on. So, you know, just mud stick it on there. That's on both sides. This other side is just as cool looking. So, yeah, luckily, like I said, we're not using any of that. We're hacking all that out. We're also removing these plates here. I want to cut a hole right there and make it do a coilover conversion. Um, it's like a, maybe do a little rock crawling right there. Um, this is kind of neat. This is a uh, factory dual shock. I'm missing one on this side, but it's kind of a cool option. So I think at some point this was a lifted truck. I don't think it was a four wheel drive. I'm um, also, this is a 71 or two, I believe it's a 72 and it uh, has leaf springs, which is kind of neat. Uh, we're taking them off and putting on trailing arms, but it's cool to see that. Um, they welded in, this is supposed to be riveted in, I believe in this area, and they moved it forward, I don't know why, and then they made some hokey little plate right there, I think I'll be knocking all that out, putting stuff where it's supposed to be, so we're going to weld up all the, apparently the person who did this repair was super, super handy with a, with a hot knife. Hot wrench, that's what they call them back in the day, the hot wrench. So all this was done with a torch, cutting torch. And then this is, I've not seen this, like apparently this is some sort of an adapter to be able to run a bumper on the frame. I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, it, it actually does, does make sense because with the leaf spring purchase right there, you can't use the conventional bumper brackets. So yeah, this is a bracket that someone has put a trailer hitch on. And the trailer hitch is just as quality as the rest of the install. Sketch, sketch, sketch. So we're gonna be de-sketching this thing. Um, but yeah, the first part is gonna be the fun part, which is uh, I like to use a air chisel and a real sharp tip and just start knocking all the rivet heads off. For the perches, we'll get rid of these shock mounts. We're doing a coilover conversion in the back. And uh, those rivet heads right there, we'll knock those off. And start blazing stuff up. Be right back. Okay, so I got out the air chisel. I have a somewhat blunt tip on it. Try to keep it as sharp as possible, but you can see the angle right there. I like to keep it a little bit deeper than straight and then a little chamfer on this side to pull whatever I'm cutting away from the, the area. You can, I mean, buzzes the heads off pretty well, they go flying when you cut them off, but it knocks, I mean, that's what it looked like when I started, and it knocks them right off pretty fast, maybe 
10, 15 seconds on each one. You just kind of chisel into it and then just sort of walk around a little bit and snaps right off. Flies across the room, it's a good time. Um, right here you can see I tried to use the edge of the chisel to maybe knock that rivet out, but those rivets are hot rivets and they are fused pretty well to the frame. So it's better to grind them all the way down flush to the frame and then use something to knock them out the other side before you weld it up. Um, I found that this is the best way to remove these after you take them off. You could try to chisel right in there and separate them if you want to be surgical. That just takes a bunch of time. This honestly, cake and these things are swedged up I don't think they'll knock out they'll just probably flare so I like to grind them flat then use a round punch to knock them straight through anyway let's move back up to the front I just buzzed all these off because I was on a roll with the air chisel I've got the ones knocked out of the front. And then I'm gonna unbolt them here and here. And then, are they already missing? Wow, I don't remember taking those out. Either way, knock this piece off and then start fitting the new piece, which is a little reinforcement. And a spot for the uh, shock mount. Okay, so I got out the Miller plasma cutter and I uh, set these plates from CPP on the cross member after I went ahead and removed um, with the air chisel the old upper control arm perches. You just sit on there just like that. Mark the circle. Use the plasma cutter to cut out that insert. Still a little warm. And then just set the plates on. This is the upper control arm perch. It has nuts welded inside there, sort of a heavy duty nut cert. It lines up perfectly with the holes on the back side because the uh, upper control arm bolts are a little bit longer than, uh, oh, you just, you want as much meat on there as you can. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward job. Let me set that upper control arm on real quick. See what it looks like. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. A couple of bolts, these are enough provisions for shims to do the alignment. Cool. That's a built-in bump stop right there, already installed. Ball joints are already installed. Okay, so we are in the middle of cleaning up this frame, fitting components. We've gone back here, taken that rear cross member that somebody had, uh, or yeah, frame cross member that would have normally been here. They moved it up here and welded it in for some strange reason. I do not know why. I'm guessing they maybe added a blazer tank to this. They needed the space, but we need to put it back where it's supposed to be because the panard bar that operates with trailing arm suspension has to be mounted in a very particular location which is the stock location. So we're gonna weld those holes up, make it look all pretty, build a better reinforcement in the stock location. Um, what else? Oh yeah, these uh, amazing front shock mounts. These are pretty high end. What I've done so far is remove the nuts that apparently from the looks of the hole in there were loose for a long time and things just started to elongate and bounce around. So uh, I'm gonna look at the weld there. 
absolutely does not look solid at all. So, uh, yeah, whoever mud stick this. This one looks like they worked on it for a while. Yeah, this one may take a little more beating. Amazing. All right. I'm surgical. Surgical with that thing. Hey, Mason's over there laughing. You've never seen technique like that, have you, buddy? That was good. That was good. SEMA build 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward.